Today, I will go over some basics and advanced tips for in-paint and out-paint, including an additional way to face swap for those who want to keep as much detail of the original image as possible, plus an extra pointer about the refiner to help bring more realism to your images, and a quick note about reproducing a feature of Magnific AI. With that said, let's get started. As usual, I will keep all settings at default. Only change will be going into Advanced tab and setting the resolution to 768 by 1344 and unchecking Random Seed. Now let's go to Input Image and then In Paint or Out Paint. You can load an image here or drag an already generated image from above. This can be any image from anywhere, doesn't have to be generated by focus. Out Paint is basically these four options at the bottom. It will expand the canvas in whichever direction you want. You can choose one or all four. For this, I will check all four. That will widen the image in every direction, kind of like zooming out. You can also mask an area if you want to make a change along with expanding the image, but it's not necessary. I will mask this area and for the prompt you want to type in what you want to see in the extended background. And also, if you masked an area, what you want changed in that area. Here I will type a woman with a large jeweled necklace standing in a throne room, and then generate. And you can see it expanded the background and added the necklace. Outpainting an image does add to the resolution, not just zooms out the picture. If you expand all sides on a 768 by 1344 image, it will become a 2058 by 2150. And you can keep dragging that picture down and expanding if you wish. I'm not sure how large it can get to, but I've gone as high as 10K by 6K with no issues. Now let's start looking more at inpainting. I'm going to uncheck all the outpaint directions. In case you didn't notice, this tooltip is easy to miss. Holding shift and using your mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out of the canvas. Control plus mouse wheel changes, brush size, Control Z is your undo button. It will remove the last mask stroke you made. F will move the canvas, S is full screen mode, and R will reset it back to default size and position. The in-paint and out-paint default is good for most things when trying to add or remove objects or change something about our image. Now we will try to remove the necklace we added, mask the area, and for the prompt, you can simply type what we want in that area. Since basically nothing but her neck, I will try clear skin. While using in-paint, it will not alter the resolution of the original image, so if you bring in a custom size image, or are in painting one that you out painted to a larger resolution, the new output will still retain that same size. Not bad. Now we can drag this image down and continue altering it. We can also try removing other details. Perhaps we want to remove this hair and shorten it up. Sometimes it takes a few tries or some different prompts, but if it isn't too complicated, it should give you something close to what you want. Every once in a while, you might run into something that just won't work. Either the combination of text isn't right or the AI isn't understanding you. I tried removing these earrings and I gave up after several dozens of generations. It can probably be done, but I just wasn't finding the right words. Now let's talk about the difference between modify content and the normal in paint. I will mask this side and try to add some people to the background. Modify is a stronger setting as where the default in paint takes into account the masked area it's replacing, modify content will ignore the original content entirely. With the default, we get a changed background, but the colors and setting are very similar to the original image. Now with modify content using same prompt, it gave us a similar background, but you can tell it strayed from the tone of the original image. Colors and even extra elements that don't quite match the original scene are added. Use Modify Content setting if you are trying to change the background completely or add an object in that isn't happening well enough with the regular inpaint. Getting more technical with the settings. The main difference between the default and modify is in the debug menu. The normal inpaint will use the inpaint respective field slider to around 0.6, as well as still use the initial latent image. Modify content will not use the respective field and also disables the initial latent image. The in-paint respective field is a weight setting. The higher it is, the more it takes into account the entire image and all the things in it. The initial latent setting does the same thing, but it factors the area inside the mask, as where respective field factors in everything outside the mask. In this example, our original image had the text prompt, basket of fruit. Um, I masked out the fruit next to the bowl, then I added 
coffee cup to the text prompt. With the respective field turned up and initial latent still enabled, it gives me a coffee cup and blends it into the scene. Since I already have a basket and fruit in the scene, these settings will see that and just give me a coffee cup here. But if we disable the initial latent and turn respective field to zero, now the AI will ignore everything going on in the scene and try to add everything in the text prompt into the masked area. And that's why we get this. So using these settings, which is exactly the same as selecting the modify content preset, we get the AI trying to add everything in the prompt into the selected mask area. And using the default in paint settings, we get an image that only adds the coffee cup because it detected a basket and fruit in the rest of the image. Hopefully that all made some sense and you get a better idea about these settings. Let's move on to improve detail. While it says face, hand, eyes, this can improve detail on anything you want. This option is your go-to when you have a good picture, but maybe the face looks a little off, or the eyes just aren't right, or an object in the background needs more detail. Let's try to improve this detail a little. I will mask the front here and type in highly detailed embroidery. That looks a little crisper. You can see it's good at adding detail and resolution to your image. Or of course a face, like this. A decent image, but the face isn't quite right. Simply mask it and uh, type in something simple like detailed girl face. Or you can use these quick options here. These are just for convenience. You can use them or type whatever you like. The reason why this works well is it only changes the masked area. So you get all that rendering power in that small area. Also the in paint prompt box and the positive text prompt box do the same thing. You can use either one. It will give the same result for the phrase. Now for the advanced tips. For this, we are gonna go back to the debug menu, go to the advanced tab up top and check the debug box. Now that we are in the debug menu, we need to go to the control tab and check the box that says mixing image prompt and in paint. Doing this will now activate the image prompt control nets to be usable with in paint. In my last video, I showed how to use face swap in the image prompt tab by adding an image here using face swap control net and adding an image here and using the Pyrocani or CPDS control net. Using this method, you can take this face and add it to the structure of another image. This is great for blending the face into the other image, but it always changes some details of that image in every generation. Face swapping with InPaint will keep all the details of the image you are trying to change the face on, but it can be a bit trickier getting the face to look more natural. For now, we will use this image on face swap and leave the default settings. Go back to InPaint. I will switch to this image to better see the face. Now we want to mask her hair and all the exposed skin. If you don't include the hair, it can come out with mixed results, parts of the new face's hair coming out of the old. Also, if you only select the face and stop at the neck, you might see a line where the mask ends, especially if the skin tone between the two are very different. So it's a good idea to select as much skin that you can see down to the collar. You can do this without a prompt and it will just focus on the face swap control net. Now using the default in paint and out paint, I want you to watch the steps and the image as it generates. You will notice that for the first 15, you can see the face of the woman we are trying to add very vividly, and then you get a big change. What's happening here is due to the InPaint engine. It's using its own calculations for the second half of the image in order to get a more natural looking result. While we get a face close to the one we are going for, it's not quite there. Turning that off directly will give you a closer result, but it won't look natural. This is where we switch to improve detail. The settings down here are simply three different presets of settings in the debug menu to help get desired results. You can see switching that will change settings in our debug menu. Changing to improve detail from the default removes the in-paint engine, cuts the denoise strength to half, and sets the in-paint respective field to zero. These settings are a good start for face swap. Let's run it again. And now it sticks closer to our face swap image. I will move the denoise up from 0.5 to 0.6 this will influence it a bit more and start changing the hair. Obviously these settings will affect images differently. Letting the seed randomize will also change the outcomes more, but hopefully you get the idea. You can also drag one of these images down and run it again to get it even closer to the face swap or start detailing other parts if you wish. Using InPaint can work well to face swap and keep details. It gets trickier when the face you're swapping is further away. The main thing is the proportions can sometimes be way off or just look unnatural. It helps to just mask near the face rather than the entire head. That way it can keep closer in proportion. It can still look a bit stiff. 
or the face might not be angled correctly. But with a little luck and some regenerating with different seeds, you can still get something workable. Okay, I want to show a quick tip on using the refiner. I'm going to reload the page, which resets all settings back to default. This isn't a new feature, but easy to miss if you don't know about it. I am going to go to the model tab and then the refiner pull down. I am going to select realistic vision. This is a stable diffusion 1.5 model. Even though it is not an SDXL checkpoint, it can be used as a refiner in combination with your base model. You can download a realistic vision. If you don't have it from Civit AI, there is a link in the description. It doesn't have to be this specific checkpoint, but it works very well to get a more realistic look if that is something you want. I am using the V5.1 VAE version. The V6 Neo did not work for me, so make sure you use that one. And download the model safe tensor that is 3.97 gigs. Then we can put our refiner switch to the recommended 0.4. What this is going to do is switch over to realistic vision at a certain point and let it refine what we started with. Think of the number as a percentage. 0.4 will be 40%, so at 40%. Or around step 12 of 30, if you have the quality on speed, the refiner will kick in. Obviously, the lower the number, the earlier it will kick in, and the more it will influence your picture. 0.4 is a good starting point. With this, it gives it a more realistic look, less of that glow that you can get with some pictures. And it also makes the skin more realistic with imperfections and not so overly smooth. But it comes down to personal preference. Okay, last thing I will show is something I have seen when mentioning Magnific AI. Its main selling point is the ability to add detail and upscale images without changing too much of the original image. And I'm not knocking that, other than its obscene monthly price tag. But what I do want to mention is the showcased old low-pixel video game and cartoon images that were then turned into upscaled versions. To a point, this is something we have been able to do with Stable Diffusion for a while. For example, the Lara Croft image that was shown quite a bit I will go to Input Image and load the Low Poly image into the Upscale or Vary tab. Click on Very Subtle, type Laura Croft, and Generate. Not as good as the Magnific AI demo out of the box, but not bad from what we started with. Plus, we could put this through InPaint Detail and probably get a good image with more effort. I also did this with an old Shrek photo with one pass of Very Subtle, and even ran Ryu through Very Subtle once and, and then Pyrocanny. For many people, this is nothing new, but I just wanted to point it out to those who didn't know. And that's all I have for you guys in this one. I hope it was helpful and you found some value in it. And I will see you in the next one.